Being able to effectively display your data in a logical and coherent manner is a key engineering skill required to convey complex ideas or results. MATLAB is capable of producing professional quality plots of data in a highly user configurable way. Using MATLAB, you can easily present your data exactly how you want. The most basic way to plot data is to use the plot function. The help menu for the plot function returns many ways to use this function, but we'll start with the most basic. Generally, you want to pass the function two inputs, an independent variable and a dependent variable. These should both be vectors of the same length. We can quickly test this out by defining a time factor from 0 to 10 seconds in increments of 0 0.01. This is the independent variable. Then we can define a dependent variable as a function of time say y is equal to 10 sine of 5t. We can now plot the dependent variable against the independent variable to produce a plot of y of t. Notice a plot function expects the independent variable first and then the dependent variable. If we reverse the order we still get a plot but it's unlikely that this is what you wanted to display. Let's create a new dependent variable x that's meant to express e to the minus t times cosine of 10t. When we try to define this new function, we get an error saying incorrect dimensions. That's because for traditional matrix multiplications, the number of columns of the first matrix must match the number of rows of the second. In this case, however, we aren't attempting to do traditional matrix multiplication. Instead, we want to do something called element by element multiplication. In other words, we have two vectors of the same size, in this case one by a thousand. We want to create a third vector of the same size by taking the product of the first two elements of the vectors and putting it into the first element of the new vector. Then we want to take the product of the second two elements from the vectors and place it into the second slot of the new vector, and so on, until the new vector represents the entire product of e to the minus t times cosine of 10t as a new vector of the same length. We can accomplish this in MATLAB simply by using the dot notation before the multiplication sign between the two vectors. This indicates that we want to multiply these two vectors in an element by element sense. Note that you don't need a dot between the 10 and the t since 10 is a scalar and t is a vector. You only need to use the dot notation when multiplying two vectors or matrices of the same size in an element by element fashion. Now we can see the result of plotting t versus x. In some cases, it's desirable to change the appearance of the plot, which can be done using a third argument called a string specifier. This is a specifier used to alter the appearance of the plot. A partial catalog of all of the available options can be found in the help menu. So if we want, say, a red dashed line with star indicators at all of the data points, we can plot t, comma, x, comma, and then as a string, r, dash, dash, star. We can use more advanced syntax to really customize the appearance of our plots. Take, for instance, the example given in the help menu. It should produce a dashed red line with squares at all of the data points, and also increase the line width to 2 from the default of 1, and also change the edge color of the square marker to black, also, change the inside color of the square marker to green, and increase the marker size to 10. If we plot two functions separately, notice that the only plot that appears is the last plot function to be executed. That's because MATLAB overwrites any previous plot by default. If we want to plot both of these data sets on the same set of axes, there are a couple of ways to do it. The first is to use the hold function. After we make the first plot, we can tell MATLAB to hold on, which just means to keep the current plot in place and add another plot right on top. The second way to do this is to use multiple input arguments on the same plot function. So in this case, it's plot of t comma y comma t comma x. In other words, we pass the plot function two pairs of vectors to be plotted. Doing it this way produces the same results as using the hold function. As a general practice, whenever there are multiple datasets being plotted, it's important to use a legend to describe each set of data. MATLAB's legend function makes this very easy to do. 
the legend function requires as many string inputs as there are data sets. So, in this case, we'll want to display two strings corresponding to the two sets of data. Note that the order of the plot functions correspond to the order of the legend inputs. So, the first legend input will describe the first data set that was plotted, and so on. Adding other features to your plots is easy to do as well. Features like titles, X labels, and Y labels are all important to have on your plots to make it easy for the reader to comprehend your data. Furthermore, you may wish to add a grid to your data for ease of viewing. Often, it's desirable to frame your data in an aesthetic manner. In other words, for the plot of, say, 10 plus sine of 5t, the default plot results in a sine wave spanning from the very top to the very bottom of the axis, which may not be the most visually pleasing. You can set the y limits by using the ylim function, which requires a two vector as its input. The elements of the two vector are the lower and upper limits that you desire. In this case, we can try from 8 to 12, which looks more visually pleasing. A slightly more advanced way to do this would be so that the plot automatically scales to whatever data is being plotted. You could set the upper and lower limits to be 110% of the maximum value and 90% of the minimum value, so that the Y scale is automatically adjusted. Keep in mind you can also adjust the X limits by using the XLIM function in a similar way. Sometimes you may want a particular script to output many separate plots, instead of having all the data appear on a common set of axes. You can use the figure function to specify that you want to open a brand new figure for some new data. If we say figure with empty parentheses, we're asking MATLAB to open a new figure and plot the data in the subsequent lines of code. Using the empty parentheses requests that MATLAB automatically number the figures. However, if you have a particular numbering convention in mind for your script, you can always specify the figure number at the top. In many other cases, you may wish to plot many sets of data, and you might also want the plots to appear in a particular arrangement. As with most other things in MATLAB, you can create what is essentially a matrix of plots using the subplot function. The way this function works is to pass it three arguments. The first two are for the dimensions of the matrix, and the third one indicates the element of the matrix you wish to plot to. Let's create some more data sets to plot. Typing subplot 3, 2 indicates that we want to create a 3 by 2 matrix of plots, and then in the third argument, putting a 1 indicates that we want to plot to the first element in that 3 by 2 matrix. Below the subplot function call, we can now make the plots as normal. When we're done with everything pertaining to the first plot, we can then specify that we want to move to the second subplot. In this case, subplot 3, 2, 2 indicates that we want to plot to the second element in the 3 by 2 subplot matrix. I can repeat this for each element of the subplot until I populate every element in the matrix of plots. Hopefully you've picked up some basic plotting skills needed to display your data in an effective manner. Keep in mind this entire video was centered around the plot function, but MATLAB has several other default plot types like semi-log plots, log-log plots, scatter plots, bar graphs, histograms, 3D surface plots and 3D mesh plots, to name a few. In a future video, I'll cover some more advanced techniques so you can take your plotting and data presentation to the next level.